fudge it in there. You can paint a little yellow ochre in there as well. And that's how we paint them. A lot of fun. Very nice, straightforward, fun project. To put his packages on, just take and glue them onto the side. You can texture them too by taking a little bit of uh, a small V-tool and making a little roll of cuts in that. This is like we did with our Santa last week. And that simulates the woven ash splint that the baskets are made out of. And then just glue them onto the bear, and that's what you end up with. Isn't that neat? So now, our Adirondack Santa has a black bear for a companion. This is a fun project. Try it. I think you'll really enjoy it. Next week, we're going to do something a little different. We'll be making this clipper ship figurehead. And it's use a little bit of different technique, and I'll show you some kind of neat ways to antique it as well. Well, I've had a lot of fun being with you today, and until next time, I'm Rick Boots, wishing you happy carving. Rick Boots has written two books entitled Wood Carving Step by Step, Woodland Creatures and Santas. Rick demonstrates and describes through extensive illustrations and photographs how to carve a chipmunk, a river otter, a red fox, an alpine St. Nicholas, an Adirondack Santa and his bear, and a Swiss St. Nicholas. The two-book collection is available by calling 1-800-950-9648. The price is $29.90 plus shipping and handling. Coming up next on wood carving, we'll be making this clipper ship figurehead. So don't go away. Hi, come on in. My name is Rick Boots. Welcome to Wood Carving. Today we're going to be working on a reproduction of a figurehead eagle that was carved around 1850. And this is the design we're going to be doing. It was uh, originally on a clipper ship, and it's kind of a classic early American eagle shape. What I've done is taken a pattern of the original design and scale it down so we can use it as relief carving. Then I just trace my border here and cut it out with a bandsaw. And then fasten it into the vise with a hardwood block screwed into the back. And that way when I'm carving, the piece isn't going to be sliding around. I'm using a mallet to rough this out along with a gouge. It's a 35 millimeter number five. And that has a sort of a medium amount of curvature to it. And it, uh, it's good for sort of general roughing out with a piece of wood like this. The mallet helps by working the tool through the wood so you don't have to use a lot of extra force. When you're using a mallet, what you want to bear in mind is just want to tap it lightly. You don't want to have to be hammering down real hard on it. A mallet about a 20 or 25 weight is good for starting. If you're strong, something maybe about a 30 weight works quite well. Now this wood is white pine, which was one of the traditional woods they used for this type of carving. And it's a piece that I got 
from a lumberyard when it was green and then just stored it up in my garage for a few years to let it dry out. And it makes a really nice carving wood. Now if you have a boat that you'd like to put a figurehead like this on, you can make one, oh, like the original. It was uh, nearly six feet long and about four feet high. But I thought uh, a nice little relief carving would look good in my living room. Once you get most of the uh, large chunks taken out, you can go right to just using the gouge powered by your hands. And to do that, one hand pushes and the other hand guides the tool through the wood. And again, you want to make sure that your piece is fastened down to the bench. You don't want to be trying to hold this wood and carve at the same time. That's a very dangerous thing. America has a very rich tradition in figurehead carvings all along the seacoast from Boston to New York and even places farther south, North Carolina, as far south as uh, southern states, there were uh, figurehead carvers. And it's really a kind of a fascinating tradition that we have. Let's go take a look at some old ones. We're here at the Peabody Essex Museum in Salem, Massachusetts. This building houses one of the finest collection of carved figureheads in the country. Some of these old figureheads were huge and often weighed several hundred pounds. This one is from the sailing bark Marie and decorated the bow or the front of a boat over a hundred years ago. It's a fine example of what we often think of as the classic figurehead. Notice the joint where the right arm joins the shoulder. This may be a repair, although sometimes delicate parts of the carving were designed to be removed when at sea. This prevented damage from heavy weather. They were reinstalled before the ship came back into port. Like many of these old wood carvings, the actual name of the artist is unknown. Many weren't signed, and it was just considered part of the tradesman woodcarver's job. This type of carved decoration was known as a billet head, and was often used in place of figureheads on boats. It's believed this particular one once decorated the bow of the USS Constitution around 1830. It's a great example of just how massive some of these carved decorations could be. This one probably weighs over a thousand pounds. Too many of these could really slow down a sailing ship. corners rounded off on the carving, then you can sketch in the feathers. There's two ways you can do this. You can lay a piece of carbon paper down and then lay your pattern over and trace on it. Or you can, as I just did, just freehand these in. Don't worry about making them look 100% exact. Every carving is going to look just a little bit different and take on its own personality. Now I think what I'm going to do first here is start carving with the eyes. And to do that, I'm going to use a number nine gouge. And this is one with a fair amount of sweep to it. It's kind of U-shaped. And that's handy because I can take and carve under the brow here and actually create a little bit of a ridge. By outlining the eye, I can create so the feeling of the eye socket there. And then it's just a matter going through and detailing it. Even though this is a three-dimensional carving, it's actually carved in such a way that it uh, appears with the proportions compressed. So it appears as a two-dimensional design. It's 
So what I'm doing is I'm not compressing this down and carving this down quite as much as it would be on a uh, real figurehead. Okay, now that I've carved around there, I can take and smooth that off. To do that, I'll use a tool that's a little bit flatter. Uh, we'll say like a number three or a number five. I can kind of round that off a little bit. Come around here. And then bevel this down a bit. One thing that's handy to do when you're learning uh, relief carving and working with the gouges is to be able to work right and left handed. In a case like this, I can flip from this side to make these cuts so it goes for the grain and doesn't cause any splinters, or I can just work from the other side. And what that means is you don't always have to end up turning the wood around so that you're working with the correct direction of the wood. Now for doing the eyes, to detail them, I'm going to use a V-tool. And that's a tool where the two sides come together to form a V. And it makes a nice little incised line. And with this, I'm going to carve around the top of the eyelid. And come around the bottom of the eyelid. Always being kind of careful and, and sensitive for any splintering. If you feel the wood start to splinter at all, what you do is just come and carve from the opposite side. Then I can take my flat, number five, and just kind of come around here and very gently round off the inner portion of the eye. Come and get this side. Clipper ships are a fascinating subject. I, I love clipper ships. The first one was built in New York in 1845, called the Rainbow. And they were designed to carry small amounts of cargo very, very quickly. I'll come around and do the Siri. And they did that by making a very lightweight, narrow boat with a lot of sail area. And basically what they were racing cargo ships. Just to give you an idea how fast they were, the Flying Cloud made the run from California to New York around the Cape Horn and did it in 89 days. Now that doesn't seem like a whole lot until you realize that the around the horn uh, a lot of ships never survived because of the storms and it was pretty rough going. That record wasn't beaten by sail until 1989. So it was quite a feat. All in a wooden boat. carving around the tongue here. I'll bevel this down just a little bit. There, and that's the basic uh, shape of the face laid in. Now for doing the feathers, this is an example of deep relief carving. And the reason they did that was on the figureheads they saw from a much greater distance. To do that, we start out with a gouge that kind of matches the curve of the feather. And we just lay that along the edge of the feather, pretty close to the outline, take our mallet, and tap it down about an eighth or a quarter of an inch, and just kind of walk it along the edge of that feather. Make the other curve, we come up the other way here. See, this design being based on a figurehead, 
It was something that was meant to be viewed from across the heavy seas and looking proud on the front of a ship. So we can make this a little bit deeper. And then we can texture them and sculpture them so that they'll show off from a distance. When you have these cuts set in, or the vertical cuts made, then you take a tool, a flat tool, and I'm using a number five fishtail gouge, and that's because it's got the corners that sort of flare back, and it's great for getting in these little tight corners. And we just clear away the background, and it gives us our basic feather shape. If you have any fibers in there that hold it in, just make another vertical cut and they come clean. And then we can take and texture down into there. Give us a feather shape. As we're carving and getting closer towards the uh, front of the head here, the feathers get smaller and smaller, just like they do in a real bird. So you'll want to use a smaller tool. In this case, I'm using a uh, number three gouge, about eight millimeters wide. And that's our feathers carved in in detail. Now, for the finishing touches, you take a small V-gouge and carve a line on either side of the shaft and that gives us a central shaft down there. When you're doing this, make those curved because on a real bird, they don't all lie in a straight line. They have a, a, a bend that follows the curvature of the feather and that'll give more movement to your design and also give it a more realistic look. In addition to carving the central shafts, we can carve some breaks in there too. And these are just show where the feathers are separating just a tiny bit. So we just carve all those little details in there and then we'll be done with the feathers.
There, and there's our last cut with the V-tool. And this is how the finished carving looks when it's all detailed. Now, let me show you how we can make it look aged. First, I'll have to take it out of our vise in the block. And we'll unscrew this block in the back. This is a great little holding device here. Just get a piece of oak or hardwood and drill a couple holes in it, and you're in business. Now, to antique it, one of the things that works well is you can simulate the weathering effect of years of weather on the North Sea and the elements by taking a torch and scorching the wood. And what this does is it accentuates the difference in the hard and soft areas of the wood, the grain pattern. Now I've got to say that this is kind of a a scary thing to do after you've carved all the details in your nice figurehead here. So this is optional. And if you don't want to take a chance on uh, burning up all those feathers, you can just go ahead and go right to painting it. You want it kind of lightly toasted. You really should do this outdoors. Now I'm going to go very lightly over the feather details here so I don't burn off too much of my detail. Oh, it's looking older already. <laughs> I always feel like I'm barbecuing a carving doing this. Okay, we'll let that cool for a minute. And then we take a wire brush. And this is something that's definitely best to do outdoors because it can make quite a mess. I'll just put that over our bench and brush away the charred areas. And what happens is that brushes out the softer areas of the wood and it leaves the hard grain accentuated. And basically what we're doing is just duplicating what nature would do after several decades of uh, sun and wind and winter and everything else that these uh, carvings would have been subjected to. I especially like this technique because of the beak. Um, in this particular design, there's a very large surface area of beak here without a lot of detail on it. And by scorching it and wire brushing it like this, it brings out kind of an interesting grain pattern in the beak. And that's why white pine is good wood for doing this with, because white pine usually has a real nice variation in grain texture. Now, when you have the texturing done, we can start painting it. I'm going to use uh, acrylics to paint this. That's a water-based paint that will soak into the wood a bit, and it'll give us a nice, even color. And it's fairly durable and cleans down with water. I'm using a color burnt umber mixed with a little bit of white and yellow ochre and burnt sienna just to kind of give a sort of a nice little gray seafaring tone.
Okay, we're just finishing up the painting now. And what I've done is I've painted the tongue a cadmium red medium color, and the beak is a yellow orange. The eye is cerulean blue, and I'm just touching up a highlight of some titanium white just to give it a little bit of sparkle. And our painting's done. Now, what we can do to further antique this is to take a piece of light sandpaper, or like a 220 grit, and then just very gently sand over the areas we burned in. And see what that does. The textures, the darker textures from where we scorch the wood, are beginning to show through. And that further gives the illusion of our antique figurehead. If you'd like to antique this even further, what you can do is take some oil-based stain and apply it over the carving. And that's what I did with this one. Uh, because it's painted in acrylic, the oil won't affect it. And I took a medium brown oil-based stain and painted it on with a white, uh, heavy paintbrush, and then just wiped it off. And you can see how the stain stayed in the details, in the feathers especially, and made them appear to stand out more and gave it a more aged feeling. And there we have it our 1850s clipper ship figurehead. Next week, we're going to be working with a bird, but it's a little bit different. We're going to be doing a realistic black Bernian warbler. Well, I've had a lot of fun being with you today. Until next time, I'm Rick Boots, wishing you happy carving. Rick Boots has written two books entitled Wood Carving Step by Step, Woodland Creatures and Santas. Rick demonstrates and describes through extensive illustrations and photographs how to carve a chipmunk, a river otter, a red fox, an alpine St. Nicholas, an Adirondack Santa and his bear, and a Swiss St. Nicholas. The two-book collection is available by calling 1-800-950-9648. The price is $29.90 plus shipping and handling.